What's going on YouTube? This is Sydney Cumbie once again with yet another makeup video. Uh, today's video is going to be a simple self-application that I did. I know it's been a really long time since I've done a self-application. So I decided uh, today would be a good day. Now I didn't start this uh, application till like late at night. So it, it basically took me all night and all morning to get this thing done and off. Um, I've been super busy lately, so I've been able to upload videos. So I'm trying to get trying to get better at this. Uh, when you're busy, you don't have time to sit around and do makeup on yourself or edit videos. So guys, I'm just letting you know I'm trying. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try to talk you all the way through um, exactly what I'm doing in the video. And um, I hope I explain everything at least a little bit. I know I go off on tangents and I, I uh, often don't bring up stuff that I'm doing or something like that. But if you remember, if you have any questions about anything in the video, just uh, don't hesitate to ask below and I'll try my hardest to respond. But if I don't, I will have many more of these videos. Make sure you subscribe, because if you subscribe, I'll be able to make way more of these videos. And um, let's get this thing going. Here it goes. All right, looks like I'm gonna be running you guys through this makeup. Okay, so what I'm doing right here is I have my RBFX prosthetic and I'm sealing the prosthetic with some Thomas Serpentine Pax Paint. Uh, this Pax Paint is not your normal Pax Paint. It is made with Beta Bond and cosmetic grade pigments, so it's much easier to come off the skin, but still does the exact same thing as your regular Pax. So I'm just doing my underpainting right now. I'm just pretty much sealing the prosthetic as well as doing my underpainting. Now I'm also staying away from the edges, the thin edges. When you pre-paint a prosthetic, you want to make sure you stay away from the thin edges because you are going to go over those thin edges once you apply the prosthetic. If you would go over the edges right now, you might even glue this uh, prosthetic down to the uh, vacuum form that I have it on right now. So make sure you stay away from the really thin edges like I'm doing right here. So now I'm doing like almost like a dry brushing technique. I'm still using Pax Paint, but I'm using it on a white sponge. And I'm just sponging it on, hitting only the high points. When I'm dry brushing, you only hit the high points. You don't let the material seep into the wrinkles and crevices. You are only hitting the high points when you are dry brushing. And that's what I'm doing right here. The reason I'm dry brushing is because I want to see the red underneath. I want to see the red in the wrinkles. I don't want to completely cover up all that red. And I'm sort of just barely, you know, you can see the red underneath. That is exactly what you're going for. Go on light layers. Don't go too hard with the, uh, the PAX layers. All right, now I'm using a Dalian Tools brush to uh, even feather out the, those wrinkles even more, fill in a little bit into the gaps. Just trying to make them where they're not as harsh. Um, this Delium tool brush is the small stipple brush. It is actually my favorite brush. It's pretty amazing. I'm just stippling around trying to cover up uh, most of that red. Still having a little bit of red show through. Now I'm going back in uh, to the wrinkles with some uh, Premier Products palettes. Uh, I'm using a flesh, uh, flesh color brown as well as a lividity to go into the wrinkles. Um, this is all underpainting, so this is very, very harsh lines. So I'm just stippling the colors that I want into the grooves. I'm gonna feather all those colors out in just a bit, but I'm going in harsh right now. Still doing my underpainting. Now these palettes are uh, alcohol activated. And the first layer was uh, Pax. So that layer is set up. So I'm going over it with my alcohol colors. Now I'm going in with a light flesh color to feather these colors out. This light fle flesh color, I'm just pretty much brushing to feather all those lines and, and wrinkles out so that you can still see those colors underneath in the wrinkles. I'm doing this with a light flesh color from a uh, Premier Products palette. And I'm feathering it on with a medium um, Dalian Tool stipple brush. 
Now, as you can see, you can see that there's little dots on it. I did spatter this with my Epic Dat European Body Art airbrush. So I spattered it first. Now I'm going in with like a blood, like a maybe a dry blood uh, color, uh, European Body Art color, and I'm spraying it just on the nose and the cheeks. I don't know what I'm doing now. All right, so. Touching up the nose, maybe. Uh, what am I doing here? So it looks like I'm using the airbrush again. Maybe I'm going in with a brown or a purple. I think I'm going in with a purple here. Just uh, maybe a bruised purple to give the to hit on top of the red, not make the red as as bright. And then I think I'm going in with a flesh color here. I think I'm spattering. A uh, flesh color on there right now to sort of break up some of this uh, harsh red and um, purple that I just went on with and you're going to really thin um, with the spatter colors I go really thin so they all fade together so now I'm going over with some zinc oxide around my mouth because zinc oxide is going to dry up um, around my mouth and the reason you want to do this is so that the prosthetic seals around uh, your mouth really well because your mouth has moisture coming out of it, so zinc oxide is going to dry that up. So now what I'm doing is I'm starting, I'm using uh, Prosade and I'm gluing down the center of my nose. I'm putting it on my nose and putting it on the prosthetic so that uh, it has a contact bond, so that it bonds really strong. You can either just put it on your face or just on the prosthetic, either one is fine. But I'm putting it on both just to ensure that the it is going to hold really strong. Now that when you're working with um, uh, putting on a prosthetic, you want to work from the center outward. So make sure you uh, just like I did here is I glued down the center of the prosthetic, which is the nose and a little bit on my forehead. And now I'm working from the center outward so I can stretch it if needed. Foam latex is very flexible and stretchy, so you can always stretch it to fit somebody. And so I'm stretching and I'm not going over those thin edges quite yet. I'm just laying it, laying the glue where the, the bulk of the prosthetic is without going over the edges. You want to watch gluing around the mouth because that's the, the most stress this prosthetic is going to have. And there's going to be a lot of moisture coming out. Um, that's why I did use zinc, zinc oxide around the mouth to dry it out a little bit. But accidents still happen when your actor or model is going to be talking or you're going to be talking. You got to worry about the stress points on the lips or in the corner of the mouth. They do like to come up quite a bit. I'm actually using a uh, bent liner brush from Delium Tools right there to glue this down. That's my favorite brush to use with glue. Uh, it's not meant as a glue brush, but I use it all the time as a glue brush because it works really well and holds a lot of glue in it. All right, I'm just gluing it down. We're again, working from the inside outward. Um, now you don't have to paint like I did. I know that you know you saw me build up those layers. You know you you develop your own way of painting. Um, you know this is just some techniques that I'm just showing. You know people paint in all kinds of different ways. All that matters is that you the final product looks good, and the uh, client or uh, production is happy with the makeup. That's all that really matters. Again, you do not have to paint like I do. And generally when I'm doing small prosthetics like this, I don't like to powder pretty much anything unless it's around the mouth. I do not want the lips to get glued together. So I do like to powder the lips if I'm going over the lip with a prosthetic. But generally I don't like to powder a lot, you know, unless there's something's going to stick. So any of this that I'm doing right here, I'm not going to powder. I'm just going to go over it with more paint. I'm just lifting up edges and laying, laying them down. 
Um, the good thing about foam, it is it very porous. So if you lift up an edge, you get a lot of glow up on it, and then you still there's still a little bit that you need to lay down. You can just stipple over that with a little bit of Prosaid, and it will uh, pretty much absorb through the prosthetic as long as it's thin enough and glue itself down. And it, you know, if you're working around the eyes, I like to you know powder around the eyes, of course, because there's folds there and it likes to glue on itself. So if you're gonna powder somewhere, the lips, the mouth are uh, key areas. I'm still just lifting up edges and laying them down. Now, of course, doing a self-application is, is a bit harder than doing um, a makeup on somebody else. So, uh, you know, I always suggest practicing on friends rather than doing it on yourself. You know, you don't want to waste a lot of money, um, you know, putting an expensive prosthetic on yourself and then messing it all up. So make sure you guys practice, 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 and um, then uh, you can uh, move on to doing it on yourself and uh, it'll be much easier. So now I'm going in with the paint. So I'm used, still using that, that undertone, that purpley maroon undertone that I started out with. I'm not going on as hard with it. I don't need to fill in all the space with this. This is just going to be my undertone, um, you know, for my skin. Um, this is the same packs that I used. Uh, this is Thomas Serpinot packs. It does come off the skin much easier. I will warn you about using uh, any other type of packs on the skin because it may be a little bit harder to come off. Um, my skin's always good with packs. I can always get any type of packs off, but just um, I've seen disasters happen. So just gonna warn you. You know, don't try not to get a lot of packs. You know, all over you. And if you don't know, packs is just a combination of Prosade and acrylic paint so those two bonds get really strong the, the packs that i'm using today is actually made of beta bond and cosmetic grade pigments so it's much easier to get off the skin so that's why i'm just not worrying about it i've seen full bodies painted with this packs and everything it came out just fine no worries so now i'm going to as you guys can see i went over those thin edges with uh, the packs uh and, and to, to get them painted so this is when you want to go over the edges, like I did. So now I'm going over that light uh, flesh color that I started out with, and I'm going to stipple over all the red. So you still see a little bit of red underneath, um, but not completely covering it with a solid color. Because, you know, flesh, you build up colors to get flesh, you know. Uh, you want to you use multiple colors to build up that great um, flesh-like paint job. And I'm stippling it on just with a simple uh, makeup brush or makeup sponge. <clears throat> Blending it all together. As you can see, it's really starting to become one and look unified. I'm picking something off my head. <laughs> it's looking pretty good. I'm just going around the eyes, just stippling a little bit of that uh, flesh color pa packs around the eyes to get rid of most of that uh, bright maroon purpley color. Alrighty. I'm just still painting around, covering up a lot of that maroon. Putting some striations on my lips with some of that PAX. <clears throat> it's looking good, really coming together. Now I'm painting inside the ears. I like to use cream colors around the eyes and ears because you know some models uh, or actors can't or don't like the alcohol colors around their eyes. I'm fine with the alcohol colors, but I know some people are a little bit more sensitive to it. So I like to use the, the cream colors, uh, bruise wheels and stuff like that to uh, go around the eyes. And I blend it with a finger brush, a Delium Tools finger brush. It's really soft and it gets up in there. It's just like a little finger and uh, blends it out. Now you can see that a lot of this is not painted like on the back of my head or the top of my head is, is not really finished. Things that I can't see, I'm just working with a small mirror right now, so I'm not able to see everything. That's a, the trouble with self-application, so you really gotta check the mirror and make sure you get everything painted. But eventually all this will be painted. Towards the end, I will, I will touch everything up. 
So now I'm going in with spatter. I'm spattering with this Epic Dab European Body Art Airbrush because it does spatter. It's pretty amazing. You can use a cheap uh, chip brush that you can get from Home Depot to spatter, but right now I'm just using this airbrush. And I'm doing, uh, I'm just spattering on here to really break it up, make it look more like flesh, to sort of unify this full makeup. Spattering it, spattering it all around to really bring this makeup together. And I'm, I do multiple colors. I, I do usually like three colors when I spatter. Maybe in this one I went with like a brown, a flesh color, and a purple. So now I'm trying to match the, the flesh on my neck. So I'm just using a PPI palette with a light flesh color to, to bring it down a little bit further um, down my neck because I knew I, I realized the wardrobe um, wasn't going to cover that. And I didn't really plan this makeup to begin with. I sort of, at 8 o'clock one night, I just jumped into it and started it. And it took me all night to get this thing done. But um, yeah, I didn't really start it until 8 at night. And I didn't start applying it on myself until about 11. Uh, and see, there you go. There's a chip brush right there. So now I'm spattering some more colors with the chip brush. The chip brush you can get from Home Depot for about 50 cents. Um, and it's a really easy way to spatter colors from an alcohol-based palette. About this time, I sort of realized that this makeup needed something else. Now, um, I felt like it needed ear tips and teeth. Uh, I wasn't ready for it, so I actually, I, I, I looked everywhere in my house to find some um, ear tips, some RBFX ear tips, and I finally found some in a drawer. And I think I actually used mi mix matched ear tips that I uh, accidentally um, uh, mixed up. And so they're a little bit different ear tips, but they worked. And applying ear tips on yourself, foam latex ear tips, pretty pretty hard I didn't think it was gonna be this hard I've applied them on myself but it was, it was pretty hard but um, I got them on and I just I basically just did the same um, same paint job that I did on the face I went in with that um, maroon color um, after I got this sealed down I uh, stippled that maroon color on there uh, well as a maroon purpley color and well this one's way more purple than I think I started out with I think I actually mixed these colors together but I went with that, uh, that purpley maroon color and then I stippled other with, over with another flesh color um, that I used for the face and pretty much quickly painted these ears. I knew they wouldn't be seen you know, much in the, uh, in the actual uh, video. They're really quick ears, but got them on. I think they, they looked really good with this makeup. And when I was looking for uh, these ears, I actually found teeth to go uh, with this makeup. The teeth were Tinsley teeth. They are, um, you know, pretty great teeth for the the price. They're only like twenty something bucks. You can get them at most effects stores, if not Party City and stuff like that. Maybe they'll have them. I'm not quite sure, but the teeth really worked. Uh, <laughs> for how cheap the teeth are, they're actually really amazing. And I just uh, uh, stuck the teeth in with some Flexacryl. Um, Flexacryl is like a soft uh, plastic material. Um, you can always do it with Friendly Plastic as well, which Friendly Plastic comes with it. But I'm not, I'm not a fan of Friendly Plastic at all. Friendly Plastic pops off all the time. So Flexacryl is the, the, the teeth uh, bonder, if you, if you will, of choice. Now I'm spattering a little bit more, trying to make this makeup make sense. It's starting to look pretty good. I'm brushing the back of my head. Still, there's still a lot of painting that I didn't look in the mirror and touch up yet, but I will. So now I'm using a little bit of Glisten Up, as you can see here. I used a little bit of Glisten Up by Thomas Serpinot to shine up the nose and the, and the cheeks. And as you can see, this, these wardrobes are pretty awesome. I got the wardrobe from the movie or the film Noah with Russell Crowe. That's where I picked them up. Um, <clears throat> got them from an auction, actually. Bought a whole bunch of them, though. So that's the final makeup. There's the teeth. Uh, the, the makeup came out great for my uh, first application in years. Um, I hope you guys, uh, as you can see, I still didn't paint the back of my head, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, it, it was a lot of fun to do. Uh, 
you know, it, it came out much better than I thought for me being as rusty as I am. And um, I hope you guys learned something from this video. Make sure you subscribe to the video. If you don't subscribe, I can't do more of these videos uh, because it really gives me no reason to do these videos. I just hope you guys learned something from these videos um, on how to do effects right, how to apply prosthetics right. Um, there's a lot, a lot of things out there on the internet that's uh, it's not safe, but uh, the major majority of things that I do are, are pretty safe. Um, and um, it's what actual effects artists do. So um, make sure you guys, uh, uh, first of all, have fun, but also do things the right way and don't destroy your skin or anybody else's skin. And until next time, guys, subscribe, because I will catch you later. Thanks for watching, and bye.